There's many things out there that are not worth saying. But you see the things of God that are worth saying. There is one verse uh, that spoke to me at the very, very start. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15 I remember hearing an old saying, uh, well, I might be a good man behind me here, I've got a lot of verses here in front of me now. I know, I think it was, uh, as you look up First Timothy 1 and 15, I think it was the Reverend Douglas or maybe the Reverend Cook, he said, don't give them a loaf of bread and trying to shove it down their neck all at the one time, so I'll try and slice it up. And may the Holy Ghost give you butter and jam on it and help you. But this verse here, in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. This is a faithful saying. Can I say to everybody here tonight, they're worthy of every single body uh, hearing these wonderful words. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus come into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Boys, they feel like that. My name is not really important, but I was brought up in a little place called Donaclone. It was a little village. And you know something that's even burdening even onto my heart now? Many people want to hear the evil and wicked things that I have done in my life. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to be pulling back from that there and telling you what the Lord has done even after those days. But if I do, forgive me because I want to pull back from those things, if you don't mind. But I was brought up in Donaclone. It's a little village. It's one of them places where everybody knew everybody. We had about three aunties in the place where you couldn't have done nothing. That The top and the bottom, they knew all about you. And do you know this little fella? You don't have to teach a child mischief as an old, old saying. And I can tell you it's true. This was a boy that was looking to get into absolutely everything. He was mischievous even from his early days. Whenever uh, a teacher uh, give off to me, I would have took a half a brick and threw it through the teacher uh, and I just missed her. But you know something, Lord has funny ways of bringing you down because it was a brand new school and we ran around the side of the, 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 the school, uh, so it did. And we thought nobody seen us, but uh, we were a wee bit daft and we, we went past the staff room. Every single teacher was nearly there. And I said, what's Jordy Walker and Andy Watson running around the corner for? I tell you, we thought we were doing it in secret, we were found out all right. So the next day we were brought in. I was smacked by that teacher that I had threw the brick at. I was smacked by uh, another teacher who remained nameless. Uh, you would know her very well. The headmaster smacked me whenever I went home. My mum smacked me. And then whenever my father came home from work, I was smacked there too. My rear end was like a lighthouse for a fortnight, uh, so it was. But I tell you, do you know what that only thing it taught us? Tell you how the wickedness. I wasn't too old. I was only in primary three or primary four whenever I pitched that brick. You don't have to be a small whenever the devil wants to get into your life. And any of you uses wings, don't you be throwing bricks at your teachers. Uh, but uh, we we'll want you uh, to see the evilness and wickedness of how it can start at a very, very early age. Do you know what wasn't long in the primary school days whenever I wanted to smoke and whenever I wanted to drink? And even later on, in the early days of high school, of how I wanted to get into drugs. I'll not tell you the depths of it, but you know something? The devil will want to bring you down. There's only one reason why he wants to bring you down. So he'll bring us that down, that you'll not hear those lovely God-fearing voices. You'll not even want to go back to Sunday school. You'll not want to go back to Bible class. You'll not want to go back to church. You'll not want any godly influence in your life. I wonder if there's anybody like that here. Mom's telling you, you should do the towel. And how you want to kick back. How you want to even be maybe angry. Do you know, I said awful things to my mum and dad. Don't you ever go down that lane. Hope the Lord will break you early in life. But you know, thing, there was another thing that came into my life, and that was fighting. I became very good at it. I was undefeated in all my years. But you know, something the Lord has a good way of knocking you out and bringing the Holy Spirit in. There's another little verse that I want to bring to your heart, and that's in Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. And you know, so many people say, Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? Of course, it heard before. It just didn't want to hear it. Don't you hear your youngsters? You don't want to hear it. Isn't that right? 
whenever you come here tonight, backslider, you don't want to hear that uh, you think it's rough, but it's not. It wants to bring you into lovely fellowship and revival with the Lord God Jehovah. Imagine refusing that. Imagine not wanting that. Imagine what the Lord has done for you and you want to just kick it back. That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is wearing. There is no searching of his understanding. That tells you how mighty God is. Can I bring you down and see what you young men, I can tell you I was fit as a bull. I could have took anything out. I can remember even not long before I was saved. I took the European heavyweight out. It was just a sparring. It was three boys was put up against me and knocked every single one of them out within 30 seconds. I thought I was on top of the world. Let me bring you down to Isaiah 40, verse 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. You'll not fall, you'll utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and be not weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You see the difference between the ungodly? You see the difference between the godly, but you've seen at the very start about the power of the Lord God and his strength. But you know something? I didn't want to hear the word. I was sent along to the Brethren Sunday School and the Free Presbyterian Movement. If there's two things you, you don't want to hear the gospel, it's those two places because you'll get it with a double bar shotgun, praise the Lord. But you know, a verse that just struck me even there the other week, may I say this to you, is found in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1. This struck me so, so hard. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise be left of us entering into the rest. And if you should seem to come short of what that shook me, what do you see this next verse? For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. There's people going to hear it, but if you don't have the faith of God, you'll not hear it. So you pray that the faith of God will drop on people. That weary son, maybe you're a drinker, maybe you're a fighter, maybe you think you're as hard as nails. You won't be hard in front of God in Judgment Day. But you know, son, you'll not think about that until the Lord brings you to your knees. I remember in the Gospel Hall, I was here in those days. It was another day whenever I went in. The guys give off to me about I wasn't sitting and behaving, so I went in and stole their money in the back of the hall. I went down even as a young fella hopping and skipping and bought all, everything in the shop and I was bouncing up with this bag of sweets. Remember the hubba bubbas and the refreshers and all that? I thought I was a bee's knees. <laughs> These boys weren't backward. They came up and they knocked at my door. Where's Geordie Walker? My mum knew. Oh, this is happening again. But you know something? They gave me a cuff and they rightly did so. And again, mum and dad, they followed up that chastisement. Imagine I was doing a wicked thing. People wanting to preach the gospel and I was doing evil and wicked things. But let me tell you how the Lord brought me down. 1 Corinthians 1 and 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Let me tell you, we were, uh, mum and dad went to these things called the Truth for Youth Holidays and I brought long bio here for uh, to keep an eye on them. If nothing else, and I had two wee golly women, Rosie and Sally Freeburn, for to keep even more eyes on them because this boy was any time I could, I was looking to do mischief. The wee woman down there knows what I was up to, but there was one up above who seen everything I was doing. I had to put a stop to it in a wonderful and a mighty way. So I was coming up and they were giving out a word of testimony. I didn't even want to be in the same room. That's how I hated the gospel. I would have laughed and the cracked and joked, but I hated to hear the gospel. So then I come up and there was this one giving testimony and that one was giving testimony. And I remember, I'll never forget it to the day I died, there was a little blonde-haired girl. She wasn't too high. She wasn't too old. She just gave an innocent testimony. I was given the word of God from my youth and didn't want to hear it. But the power of the Holy Ghost was moving this night. The word of God moved mightily that night like a hammer. Like I said, nothing feared me. If there was 20 men in front of me, I would have run right in the, in the middle of them. But you know something? The Lord was going to bring me down low. How? 
You think maybe you shout harder at that young fella. You think you might shout harder at that young woman. Praying without ceasing. Because that's what mum and dad did. Because not long before this, mum and dad was good living people. But they weren't saved. They had no power with God. They got saved. And they prayed about their young boys. Do you know one of the things that never nailed me back in those days, but it nails me now? We're crying for their boys because we're drinking and fighting and doing all the rest of it. I heard them coming in late. They prayed. Don't forget the power of prayer, mother and father. I think they're lost cause. Do you know many people thought I was a lost cause? But the Lord looked down at the vile sinner that I was and seen a difference. So we blondie girl, she got up and said her testimony. For one of the first times in my life, I feared. The hair in the back of my neck stood up. I turned around to the mate and I said, I need to get saved. And I was used to pulling people's legs at that time, even through things like this. But you know something? They knew it was a difference. I gripped them by the neck and I said, go you and get me Tom Martin. said, I need to get saved and I need to get saved now. Remember Tom Martin saying that, ah, oh, Jordy, he's just pulling the leg again. He came around the corner. It's the first day I think I cried. And boys, did I cry. No one crocodile tears. And Tom said, you've been broken. <laughs> oh, to be broken. And Tom and Reverend Crane brought us upstairs. I looked to the left-hand side, and there was people crying. Went up the stairs, and there was people crying. Went up to the top of the stairs, and there was people lying over the balcony, and they were crying. It was a movement of God. I would pray for death like that to happen again. Such a movement. I don't think there was a person that wasn't touched. Oh, for meetings like that again. Are you touched? But, you know, things went on, and I went up, and I was led to the Lord. The verse that come to me, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, it was wrote by three or four families that came together, bought me a Bible and wrote this in. And it's Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him. Do you acknowledge him? Maybe it's from Sunday to Sunday. Is it a daily thing? Is it a passionate thing? Is it an encouraging thing that you come to the house of God? Or is it like, Oh, boys, oh, we're going to Sunday school again. We're going to church again. Are you not encouraged with the things of God? You wonder why there's nothing happening right in our country. Only evil and wicked things. Where's the prayer for minutes? Do you remember there used to be hours of prayer? Remember there used to be nights of prayer? Remember there used to be times of prayer? My friend, where's your times of prayer? Do you wonder why people aren't being moved? But you know something, I was saved, and this is my message, because like I say, there's many things I don't want to tell you about this evil, vile, wicked sinner. I don't even like thinking about them. It was the days I loved to think about them. I used to love to, to run out, and people say, ah, you can't enjoy that in the world. That's the biggest sort of bunker I've ever heard in my life. I loved every minute of it, If you know, because it was a draw, because I wanted to keep away from the promises of the word of God. But I say I loved it. But you know, someone when I was saved, there was a difference. Didn't want to smoke, didn't want to drink, didn't want to fight, didn't want to mess about, as it were. And believe you me, that's very hard for me. Messing about. But one verse came on to me, and I'm not a big studier. I'm not good with words, as you probably know. Second Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And now the man says, you need to study the word of God. He says, boys, boys. Do you know how many novels have tried to get me for to read in school? Do you know how many I've read? None. And that means whenever I went under 16, but they say, this is no novel we want you to read. This is a power of the word of God which will enliven your heart. My friend, are you... Do you read your Bible? I'm a Christian. Didn't ask you that. You read your Bible. Do you know the promises that the Lord gives you? You wonder why there's no power in the church. You wonder why there's no power in outreach and all the rest of it. My friends, study to show thyself. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Ephesians 5. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth. Sorry for waking this up. Only joking. I waked out of sleep. When I say that there, it actually scared the living lights out of me. Because I was looking just to do, you know, you get saved and stuck. What about getting saved and getting revived in your heart, gentlemen and women? 
What about not being dragged into the prayer meeting, but you say, I need to pray for my loved ones and they'll get saved. And you'll not even go. You wonder why there's no power in the country. You wonder why there's more evil and wickedly abounding. You pray sometimes when you feel like it. Sometimes you've got to be brought very, very low for to pray and think of God. I think that's a shocking thing in these days. Maybe you're a member of the church. Mon used to say when the M was on the, the church roll, Mon says, might as well be on the bread roll. How vehemently, how, how encouraging you in the Lord's work. Or maybe you're a pain in the rear end. Maybe the Lord looks down and say, oh, be encouraged. Let me point you to this verse that scared the life clean out of me. Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. What are you doing with your time? Are we spending our early morning in prayer? Word of God, before we get our breakfast, our porridge, our Weetabix, or whatever you get, what about spending time in spiritual food? The Puritans used to talk about food for the soul. What food, spiritual food, do you get apart from this man behind you? What f- food do you get off yourself. I wonder would you be skin and bone in a fortnight's time, spiritually speaking, if it was to rely on yourself. But you don't rely as much on yourself. Ask for the Holy Spirit for to come. He's a lovely person. He can be annoyed. He can be greatly annoyed. And we need that person of the Holy Spirit to come and help me. Because what does this say in Ephesians 5? Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding that the will of the Lord is... And be not drunk with wine, we're in an excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you a few things that brought me down low. One of them was the death of my father. He was a loving man, he was a very caring man. He wasn't one that would have hugged you, but he would have, he would have put his hand in, he would have shook your hand. He was a kind man. He loved his family, but like I say, he wasn't these hugging ones. Some of these ones would come and hug you and they're they would spit and caw at you behind their teeth. But my dad was a loving and very caring man. But one thing he reminded me, he wouldn't have spoke openly. He wasn't very forward going, a very reserved man. But you know what he taught me at nights? I would have went down, popped my head around the corner, just looking at my mum and dad. Dad was always in his Bible, and it was bedtime. Parents, what testimony are you giving your, your young ones? Do they know that the Lord's moving, that you read your Bible? Or is the only time they see you reading your Bible coming on Sunday by Sunday? That should convict you to no end. Because there's more than children. Look at you. There's one that sees. That's the conviction that we need. That the Holy Ghost sees. One blood bought. And they're not even reading the book. Let me tell you another thing. It was the next thing that came. I'm not a good reader. I'm very, very slow. I'm shocking slow. But... There was an old friend of mine called Philly Irwin and a big boy called Mark Irwin. And I said, come on, we'll go down to the, the Christian bookshop down in Belfast. And you know something? We'll go for a fry. Now, if I heard a fry and my ears pricked up like a cocker spaniel. And I says, I go on. They knew how to pull. Sometimes you do that with people, you know. Don't just sometimes bait them a, a straight rod. Put a fish supper in the end of it. But you know something? I went down. We went in and I looked at this book and I said, boys, that's a good book. I'll take that there. And then it was the same day and I said, boys, that's a good book. Before I came, it was about about eight or nine books, roughly. And do you know what I said to myself? When on earth am I going to get the time for to read these things? Be very, very careful what you pray. It was long. I took youngsters out on a Thursday night and we were playing football. And like I say, I was used with knowing how to be on my feet and crashing on my feet and crashing everybody else around my feet. And the football went over my head. And I says, I'm just going to just jump up a wee bit because I couldn't be bored running about after that ball because it finished. I jumped up. wasn't even a foot off the ground. But you see, when I come down, you heard the cracks coming off my leg and my ankle. My ankle was dislocated. It was broke. It was smashed. My parts of my, different parts of my leg was, was cracking uh, as well. The Lord had just given me plenty of time for to read those books. But you know something? The Lord spoke to me in a wonderful way. 
And I wasn't good at reading, but there was one verse that I want you just to share this here. It was my first wee Bible study that the Lord so encouraged me that he let the touch paper with me. Now, let me tell you one thing. I was saved about roughly 17 years at this stage. Doing nothing. How long has it been since you were doing uh, nothing? Well, I was, saying, I was doing a wee bit here and a wee bit there. The Lord wanted to move things on. Genesis 13, verse 18. Then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Do you know what the Lord started doing to me? I said, what does this mean? What does that mean? Asking questions, that's a good way to start, you know. And then write it down. Do you know the two words that stuck out to me? Because I hadn't a clue what they meant. I thought they were just places and was just going to fire on to the next uh, verse or chapter as it is. I wonder, do you do that? Just lately, you're like a hen, you're, you're packing. There's a, you know where a hen eats? There's a whole tray of food in the packs and half of it's on the floor. It doesn't get half the goodness of it. It has to pack a hundred times for it to get a decent food. But my friend, the Lord wants you to taste and see and know that the Lord is good. And this is how he opened this out of heart. Mamre and Hebron, you see them two words? Where should the Christian be? Now, I'll give you a wee bit of breakdown in this here, Genesis chapter 13, and this uh, man that's reading this lovely word of God. Abraham was finally separated. You only get blessed if you have a separated work, by the way, and keep it separate and keep it clean. No going in through the back doors. This church was born through separation. I'm not going through the back door with her. People want us to do stupid things and encouraging things. It's the word of God. And keep it separate and pure. Mamre and Hebron, where should you want to be? Mamre and Hebron, a fatness, a fellowship with the Lord. I wouldn't have got that unless I looked into Mamre, which meant fatness. Hebron, which means uh, fellowship. Is that not where you want to be? And do you know something? I was like a boy, like I was 30 odd, seven years of age. And I said, I felt like a boy with a new toy if you know what I mean. Because the Lord showed me something. I thought I was the only fellow that knew this year. And I went to the boy, he said, do you know this? He says, I. And I went, oh, boys, oh, boys. You know, you feel a wee bit deflated. But I, I went on to the next person. He said, do you know what that means? Shouldn't that shouldn't be uh, where we should be found in a place of fatness, of fellowship with the Lord? And it's in Mamre and Hebron. Do you know, son, it's wonderful for the study of the Bible. You know, sometimes people say about, and I don't mean this badly, but there was Robert Murray McShane's readings, and I think it says about reading about six chapters a day. Let me tell you, see if you can only read six words a day and you know the meaning of them. Don't you go on to the next one. You get a real blasting, so you will. Sometimes you need a sirloin steak. You can't shove the whole lot down your neck. You need to slice it up, and you'll taste and see and know that the Lord is good. I think it was mighty that the Lord gives that wee bit of a drop for to get me encouraged into reading because I'm not good at reading as it were. And then the next thing that was coming on to my heart was my family because the Lord had saved me. He got me encouraged and wakened up as it were, he, he studying the, the word of God. And you know the next thing it was because I was talking to an old mate and he said, see them old Puritans are like chow and sawdust. And I went, boy, they were God-fearing men. I said, they were mighty men. Why would somebody say that? I hope there's nobody like that here. I don't get me wrong. Some of them, you maybe you need to read just one paragraph a day, but by they're mighty men. You see the things that were done. I'll encourage you now, if you have nothing to read, maybe you're watching the old TV, turn it off. Maybe you're reading the newsletter and all the rest of it. Put it to one side. Spend a wee bit more time in this here. Do you know, that was one of the first times too. I said, why don't I want to get, get the time to read? Do you know, at break time, I was in the newsletter here and then the sports page at, at dinner time. I says, I have no time. There's break time. I can open up the Word. But I might be ashamed of opening up the Word of God. Are you? You wonder why there's things not being done in our country and our land and our families. Read the Word of God. You'll get a promise every day. I believe it. So I was coming up and I was reading into... Uh, People, uh, Brainerd, uh, were reading into Jonathan Edwards and uh, Manton and all of these wonderful, wonderful men. I think they're powerful little guys. They're not like you and sawdust at all. They're mighty men of God. And they cut the word of God so, so easily and wonderfully up there. But the next thing that came on to me was my family. I'm a God-fearing man. How am I going to get on? How am I going to encourage all my young ones for to get saved and to go on well? I just don't want them saved and stuck. I want to see them saved and going on well with the Lord. Don't like seeing people saved, not getting into the work of God. 
not coming to the prayer meeting, not reading the Word of God. You should be whenever you're talking to say, do you know I was looking through such and such today? There's some people you need a tow rope for to pull out of them, what to get out of maybe from six months ago. My friends, you should be living on the Word of God. Job chapter 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And then it went down. He was worried about his sons in verse 4 and verse 5. And it was so, verse 5, and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sacrificed them and rose up early in the morning and the burnt offerings and according to the number of them all. And Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Continually. Don't pray for them just once in a while. Oh, for broken hearts to pray continually. Do you know something? This made me, made me feel because I said, what am I to try and keep my family? But I see this is a man. One, he was just a man. He was a perfect man. He was an upright. He was, he's feared. But you know the thing that hit me? He eschewed evil. Again, I go out with my dictionary. I go, what on earth does that eschewed mean? Keeping absolutely away from it. See if there's something, a fact in your Christian life, don't even look at it. You know what Bob that did with that? He looked at it, then he was down, then he was in it. Don't you want even to be looking at it? You look at that word askewed, underline it. I don't know what you do with your Bible. And if you're afraid to underline your Bible, get a wee notepad and put that word down, askewed. Look up the meanings of the word of God, askewed evil. I hope you're askewing evil. But you know the thing that they put on to me was, thus did Job continually. But you know something? The next thing that was put onto my heart, I'm going to have to fly through this here. Luke chapter 18. And these are the continuing things that the Lord did in my life. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Show me your prayer life, brother. Can you? Sister? A life, not just a whimper. I want to hear your life. Jeremiah 33. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time while he was shut up in the court of the prison. It's amazing where the word of God comes to you, by the way. You say you're so low that your Lord can't speak to me. Sometimes you need to be in that low place so the Lord can speak to you. And it's as clear as a bell. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which I know it's not. Show me your prayer life, brother. Show me your prayer life, sister. Psalm 145 and verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that call upon him and call upon him in truth. Show me your prayer life, brother. Call upon him in truth. The Lord knows a waffler. The Lord can see through you like anything. We can't. Maybe this powerful man here can't and the elders can't. Mom and father can't. Call upon him in truth. You better come to him honestly. You lay everything in front of the Lord. That's powerful what the Lord can do. Do you want that power? You need the power of the Holy Ghost and not do it through waffling. Crocodile tears and all the rest of the Lord can see right through them. Sometimes the Lord has to bring us low. Sometimes we have to, to learn to pray even when we're at our lowest position. Psalm 18 is one that always comes to my heart in verse 6. In my distress I call upon the Lord. I cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. Do you know the reason why I, this verse speaks hard unto me? I love my dad with every being in me. I thought about him every day. I thought about him every minute of the day. But you know the Lord, how he broke me in that. Do you think of me as much as you do your father? That has died and passed away. See if any mom would have told me that, I would have took him out. Fired him free the one day. But you see, when the Holy Ghost comes and speaks to you things like that, maybe there's been a death. Maybe there's an awful worry. In my distress, I called. I cried. My voice. The Lord will hear. He might answer tomorrow. He might answer next week. One thing we need, and I needed, is patience. In praying, my friend, show me your prayer life. Now we'll go into 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17. The next thing that the, the Lord needed to teach this iron wretch, 
All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Do you like being corrected? Boys, I had the cane around my rear end, the thought my rear end was like a long bag. I was only about 18, 20 years that I learned. That teacher was right. That the man of God may be perfectly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Show me your Bible reading life, brother. Show me your Bible reading life, sister. Even use wee ones. Maybe you don't understand. Don't you be afraid. You pick up the Bible no matter how small you are. You go to my dad and say, show me what that means. I think that's powerful. And I hope you know the Word of God so you're right to divide the Word of God to them we pets. First Timothy 4, 13, 16. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Meditate upon these things. Meditate upon the things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear me. Boy, is this a wonderful promise. Isn't that a wonderful promise? I think it is. Show me your Bible reading life, brother. Show me your Bible reading life, sister. And he said unto them, this is the next thing he said unto me, the Lord God and the Holy Ghost. And he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Show me your outreach life, brother and sister. How many times has a brother or maybe come up here and said, I want you to do your outreach. Do you think he's doing that for the good of his health? There's people out there damn, going to hell for eternity, not just five minutes. When you do your outreach, you say, I fear to do that. I, good. I fear to speak to people. Good. You'll be careful about it, what you say. Do you know how you do it? The Lord God will give you a wee word and it'll go for that day. It's powerful how the word puts words in your, in your hand and all you have to do is just pass it over to that person. Sometimes we have to speak less and let the word of God do everything. Sometimes we do too much waffling. Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto death. How much does the living of the word of God and the, the spirit of God in your life mean to you? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto death. Let me remind you about those things. Show me your blood-bought testimony, brother. Show me your outreach life, brother. Show me your Bible-reading life. Show me your prayer life. My brother, show them Christ in them through your life. Boys and boys, look into my life. There's not much to look at, but at least the Lord saved me from some evil and wicked things. He must increase, but I must decrease. James chapter 4 and 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life, even as vapor, that appear for a little time and vanishes away? Over this years, they've been tried and tested. Got tumors, got cysts, put everything before the Lord. But you know the one that really, really gets to me, the verse. I must work the works of him that sent me. Why let his day, and I cometh when no man can work. Are you working yet? How long are you saved and you're doing nothing? How long? Maybe you can't go out, and I don't get me wrong, and I wouldn't want to do that or offend anybody in any, any way. Your prayer life, what about that promise that says, go into the closet, close the door. How long are you spending in there before God? God sees it. My friends, as one of the things came to me, it was, it was called anaphylactic shocks. It was one of the times I was in North Dublin, hadn't a clue what was going on. Then I knew... I was going into a thing which is called anaphylactic shock. I don't know what you uh, think you might know that means. It means I've got 20 minutes to get to the hospital or I'm a dead man. Thankfully, I knew my way around Ireland. Went into Navan, in through the front door, said anaphylactic. They brought me straight in through uh, a crash room. Started losing consciousness. Knew it was far gone, but uh, the Lord was bringing me through another learning curve. Reminded me of all of these wonderful things and a wonderful day he had to bring me low for to remind me of those things. Want to keep me on my toes. Jordy, maybe you weren't reading this long enough. Maybe you haven't been praying as much as you have for those loved ones. But it's loving, I thought, ways the, the Lord did. And even still to this day, I carry around my anaphylactic stuff and knowing that 
sometimes there's some people that's only minutes away from death. And what are we doing? So that encouraged me more for to get into outreach to see our brother here every other Saturday and outreaches. And any time I can or I'm fit or my medication allows me, I want to get out there for people mightn't get the chance. But I might be that chance that the Lord might show sovereignly for to use this vile sinner for to bring that wee word of God onto somebody. Sometimes it's a wee word of God. See that wee word of God. It's powerful what it can do. Well, that reminds me a ring on a bull. You ever see a big bull? Boys, is about a ton or two ton. You give them a wee ring. It's amazing where you can pull them. But you see the smallness of the word of God. It can smash and break the mightiest of sinners. So, may I say, are we men and women of prayer? Are we men and women of faith? Are we men and women in who there is no guile? The Lord knows everything of what you're at. Are we righteous men? Or are we lukewarm? The Lord said this unto that church, the Laodicean church, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith, and the faithful and true witness, beginning at the creation of God. Do you know something? I know thy works, the Lord says. The Lord knows your works. The Lord knows what you're at. He wants to encourage you. I want to be here to be an encourager. I know thy works, whether thou art cold and whether thou art hot. I would that thou wert hot or cold. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of thy mouth. I fear this with all my heart. It's a free Presbyterian church the way that it was. Do you know I love visiting the old people? For I look back to the older generations and you go in and I would sing a few wee hymns to them. And, but you know what I look for? I look in the corner and there's our Bible sitting and it's well thumbed, if you know what I mean by that. If you don't know what that means, come to me later on. They're looking through this and they're praying for that wee missionary and they're praying for that wee one. You go into some modern houses. Where will I find your Bible? Closest to you? Or furthest to you? Or do you know what it is from one Sunday to the next? And you wonder why there's no blessing. I want to leave this with you and then go. I'm going to get shot here from oh boys oh. Uh, Romans chapter 16. I'm going to finish now. Sorry about that. Romans 16. And this is the last chapter. But you know what hit me about this little study that I had? Maybe again you know all about it. But I look down this chapter and I see wonderful, great, wonderful, mighty names in this chapter. Whose name did I see up on the top of it? I had no clue who she was. I command unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is the servant of the church, which is, is Santa Churia, that ye receive her in the Lord as become a saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a sucker of many, and of myself also. Now you can read on down that and see the great and wonderful mighty names, but let me split this down for you. Let's get this sirloin steak and cut it up a wee bit, put a bit of pepper and sauce on it. Phoebe had a clue who she was. She was a lowly little girl. What was she? She was a sister. She was a servant. Who do you think you are? Maybe you think you're some bee's knees. Lord can't use boys like that. Lord can't use girls like that. You need to be a lowly servant first of all before you can do anything. As become a saints, it says in verse 2, praise the Lord she was a saint, we servant. But let me tell you the word that really blew my head away. And I was reminded of it this morning. See if you go down to the end of verse 2 and you see that word, I hope I can say it, succorer. Are you an encourager to this man behind? Or are you pain on the rear end? Are you one of those ones that delights and wants to spread and encourage the things of God? Just the things of God, not anything else. To the Sunday school teacher, the children's worker, the outreach worker, an encourager that delights to do the things of God. Or is it hard work for you? See her, you're like this wee woman. She's filled with the Holy Ghost. And all she wants to do is encourage you in the work of God. May this whole church be little Phoebe's. And that even the, the general church will know who she is. Now, what are you before God? Oh, what will we come before the Lord in that day, my friend? Now I've got to speak, and I'm sorry for doing this at the very end, but to the sinner, you didn't care about this message. I was the same. The Lord came down with such of the power of the Holy Ghost, like I said, and struck me that I couldn't get out the door that I had to get somebody that I need to get saved now for I see the desperateness of my sin and what it means before the God. Not what sin means to a Sunday school teacher. Oh, that should be terrible. What it means before a minister and that should be terrible. What it means before God. 
Do you see that vision? You'll not be given that vision unless the Holy Ghost opens up your eyes. And it's appointed on the man once to die. Do you know how many times it was close to death? The Lord seemed fit to save this old wretch and encourage me in the things of God that I may come even unto you and try and encourage you into the work of God. Do you think of your sin? Do you know the vileness of your sin? If I was to bring you up and if every bit of clothes was taken off you, you would be embarrassed, you would want to hide, you would want to do. But let me tell you, you see, on the day of judgment, when your sin is brought before God, there's going to be no hiding place. The judgment's going to be already passed. It just needs to be passed on whenever you're at that stage. There'll be no late cries. Not that side of eternity. But now you've got an opportunity, my friend. I thought I could take on the world. But the Lord showed me that for that world, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it was personal to me. I thought it was me. Young person, are you here? You say, I don't know why that message. The message is for you if you'll only receive it. I said, it can't be that easy. You better believe it. It's too easy? No, it's just as easy as the Holy Spirit will open up your mind to those things of God. Now, come now, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. Do you know there's another little study? Can you make snow? No. Nope. Maybe artificial snow. Can you make wool? No. Nope. Those are things which man can't create. So when the Lord Jesus Christ comes and makes you a lovely new creation, he'll make you as wool and so white. And you know, there's a little verse, and this is with, I definitely will finish on this here. And this is a verse, you see, every time I have problems. I go to one verse. You say, one verse? One verse is enough to encourage me. Psalm 3, verse 3. There was a wee woman that came round to my house and visited me in one of the times of my illness. And she gave me this verse. Do you know what it spoke to me? Two things. One, it told me the depths of what she had been through. But she wanted to share on and be, like a Phoebe, be an encourager on uh, onto me. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, a lifter up of mine head. You may think I bounce about like a bunny rabbit all the time, going 200 mile an hour, I don't get down. Behind each smile is a world of woe. Do you think there's not one person here that hasn't cried through pain, through sorrow, through worry? Do you know who knows the deepest of our thoughts and wants to encourage us, but wants to encourage us back to do the Lord's work? Not just to encourage you and that's it. We're, not, we're safe to serve, not safe and loaf about I mean that in a respectful way, if you know what I mean. The Lord wants to encourage you back into the work. He doesn't want to see somebody saved by the blood of the Lamb and see them doing nothing for him. Is that what the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ means to you, brother, sister? You wonder why there's nothing being done in our country, in our land, in our churches. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and lift her up of mine head. You need your head lifted up. Who to? Not to this person, but to God. So my friend tonight, I know these are a few stumbling words, but all I can say to you, I didn't want to bring the violence of my sin because it's ever before me. I think of that, was it, was it even David, even after his saved days? He says, my sin is ever before me. But you know one thing, the salvation and the blood of the Lamb is ever before me too because there's some great day I'm going to see my Father. But greatest of all, I must not put him before the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have that love for the Lord Jesus Christ? I pray that you'll have him in tonight and I'll be your servant for the Lord Jesus Christ and him only. Amen.
Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like this video and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with new videos as they come online.